Welcome to Lawn Lessons Episode 3, How to Open Your Own Sprinkler System. There is no reason to pay somebody else to do this job for you because it's quick, easy, and it can take less than 15 minutes. And most importantly, you can save some money. So watch this video and I'll show you how. Only tools you're really going to need for this job to open your sprinklers is going to be a flathead screwdriver. And I like to bring a wrench. A lot of times there's going to be something you might need to tighten. And that's it. So it's a real easy job. It just takes a few minutes and we'll get started and I'll show you how. And the first thing you're going to do when turning your sprinklers on is you're going to need to turn your water supply on. So I have a well where I live, but it might be a little bit different for you. Hopefully you already know where your valve is inside your house, but if you don't, you want to take a look around and usually what you're going to see is some sort of an arrangement like this where on your water main you're going to have a T and then what that T does is it goes up into this valve and if I look closely there you can see that that pipe goes right out of the house. Now that we've identified our sprinkler water valve all we need to do is turn it on so that the water will flow through. Now that we've got the water on in the house, we've got to go outside. So let's take a look at where the sprinkler comes out of our house. So one reason I really like to open sprinklers, almost more than closing them, is because when you come out in the spring, there's no plants growing, and I'll flash back to a shot from last year when I closed these. Okay. Next step to open your sprinklers is you want to get to this device right here. So depending on what yours is, you're going to have some sort of a backflow preventer. And that's what this is called. And all that means is that this pipe here is where the water is coming out from the house. And that's where we just turn that valve on. It comes up through here, goes up, and then it hits this device. And this goes out into the ground and then travels out to your sprinklers. So the only thing you really need to worry about here is if you've got valves out here, and that's what these handles are, you've got to look kind of closely at this. So remember, the water's coming out here, and it's going up. So chances are, this valve right here is actually closed. And usually when valves are sideways like that, meaning it almost picture it like a, a block, that's going to mean that it's closed. So what we're going to do is by hand, we're going to turn these. Whoa. You hear that weird noise, and that's the backflow preventer. So we turn that on, and then we're going to try to move this one. And you can hear that sound, and what that is is the water going out to your sprinklers. So I have found that a lot of time when sprinkler guys close these, they tend to leave these screws turned. And watch what happens here when I turn this. So if you turn your water on, and this is what happens. You want to run out there with a flathead screwdriver and turn this like this. Now this is not a regular screw. This is not a screw that you keep turning because if you do, that's what happens. So this flathead screw that you see here is exactly like this valve. So when this valve is in this position, it's allowing the water through. Because remember that sort of wall I described? Right now the wall is turned this way and the water is passing by it. If you look really closely, right now this screw is basically blocking the water from coming out. And I've got a little drip here and this can happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this just slightly until I stop that drip. So now that both of our valves are open, we've got this one open, this one open, and we've closed our inspection ports, we're ready to go on to the next step, which is actually to turn the sprinklers on and test them out. So if you notice in this drip right here, but for this, I'd leave this for a little bit and see if it stops in its own. If it doesn't, fortunately, this can either be capped off with something you can get at the hardware store, or you could remove this piece and plug the hole that way with a similar type of plug. But I have a feeling this isn't going to be an issue. So I wanted to show this to you because things like this can happen, but it's a real minor issue. So at this point, we've got our water turned on. We've got the outside valves turned on. So all that's left now is we just need to actually test the sprinklers themselves. So depending on what you've got for sprinklers, you can either go into your house and use the timer, or in my case, I use my phone because I have a smart sprinkler controller. I have one of those Rakios, and I really like that. So I'm going to use that instead. 
Now this is no better than using a traditional clock or any kind of control for your sprinklers. It just makes it a little more convenient. So what Reikio did is they have this special function here called Quick Run. And all I have to do is hit that and then it shows me all of my zones and I can select each one and say next. It prompts me for how much time I want to run each zone which I have it set for three minutes. I say run. Every zone is going to run for three minutes. So this is kind of a clever way to get this job done. And now we can go see what happens as we run each zone. So once your sprinklers turn on like this you want to check them out and it really pays to walk around and check out each one. Because take a look at this one. This guy doesn't look too healthy, kind of dribbling water like that. And compared to this one, this one looks great. So what this means is I'm going to have to spend some time fixing that other one, maybe just unclogging the strainer that's in it. So the good news is that most of the time if you've closed your sprinklers properly, and I made a video about that that's pretty in depth, you're not going to have a problem when your sprinklers open. Now as you're listening to this you might think it sounds like an awful lot of work and you may as well just pay somebody $150, but the problem is, is that most sprinkler companies, they're not going to spend a half an hour looking at all your sprinklers. This is just what you do for yourself as a homeowner. So if you don't want to do any of this, just go ahead and turn them on, let them cycle through each zone, and then just deal with it later in the season. So at a very basic level, you're paying somebody to come out and turn a valve on for you. And if those guys really looked at every sprinkler and made sure they were working great, well, then it probably is worth $150, but I'm not sure that really happened. So if you've got a great sprinkler guy, keep him, but at least now you have an option to do it yourself and hopefully save yourself some money. I find that it's very easy. It's much quicker to open your sprinklers than it is to close them. That concludes Lawn Lessons Episode 3, How to Open Your Own Sprinkler System. I hope you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Also comment below and please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Thanks for watching.